On this page, I have two elements, the header and the content section with some dummy content so we make the page scrollable. Observe the header while I'm scrolling. So you can see how we are running some scroll animations on the header when we scroll. For this animation, we have four different animations. We are shrinking the height of the header, we are shrinking the image, we are shrinking the name and we are moving it to the left, and we are hiding the title. We will learn how to implement these animations in this video, but first, let's open up the DevTools to see what we have on this page. So in the body element, we have two elements. We have the header and the main for the content. We don't care about the content in this example because I'm using it only to make the page scrollable. Now let's open up the header to see what we have. We have two elements. We have header BG for header background and header inner for displaying the content of the header. Now you might be wondering why we are using a header background as a separate element instead of setting the background color on the header element itself. I'm going to answer that later in this video. Now for the header inner, if we open it, we see we have two elements, one for header picture and one for header text. In the header picture, I have an image element to display the image, and for the header text, we have header name and header title. As I mentioned earlier in this video, we have four different animations. One we are applying on the header background, and one we are applying on header picture, and one for the header name, and one for the header title. Now before we go to the code editor, let's quickly see what styles we have here. For the header, we are setting the position to fixed, so we make the header fixed when we scroll the page, and we are setting the height to 60 pixels, and left top to zero, and 100% for the width. For the header background, we are setting the background to this violet blue color. And we are setting the position to absolute and Z index to negative one, so it's always displayed behind the header content. We are using 100% for the width and 100% for the height, so it's using the same width and height for the header. Now, for the header inner, we have width of 100%, height of 100%, and maximum width 800 pixels, so it's the same as the maximum width of the content area. And we are centering the element using margin zero auto, display flex, and align item center, so we center the content, and we are adding some gap. Now for the header picture, we have width and height to 80 pixels. We are using overflow clip, which is the same as overflow hidden, to clip the image inside it, and we are adding some border around it. And for the image, we are setting the width and height to 100%, object fit to cover. And for header text, we don't have anything. For header name, we have some color for the text, font size and font weight, and the same for header title. Now let's go to the code editor to learn how to implement this animation. So now I'm in the code editor and I have the same example, but I have removed the animations. So when I scroll, nothing happens. Now let's implement it in step by step. Let's start with the header background. So first, let's define the animation. So we're gonna say, animation, shrink header, linear, forwards. Now let's define the animation timeline. Now what do you think we should use? Scroll or view? Now it's clearly from this example we should use a scroll. We should use a scroll because we want to progress the animation based on the scrolling position, not based on the position of some element. And this example is very simple, we're going to use the scroll position of the whole page which is the root element. So we're going to use a scroll here, and let's define the animation below. So keyframes, it's called shrink header, and we're gonna define the end state here. We don't need to define the initial state because it will be the same. So you can say 100% for the end state, or you can just say two. Let's use two here. Now to shrink the header, I'm going to use transform property. So let's say transform, and I'm gonna use scale Y, and let's say 0.6. So what this will do, it will shrink the height to make it 60% of its full height. Now let's save and try. Now let's scroll and see. Now we see two issues here. First, we are shrinking it around the middle point. So you can see we are shrinking it from the bottom and from the top. Second, we are running the animation along the whole timeline. So you can see the animation starts from the very top all the way to the bottom. But in our example, we want the animation to end somewhere here. Now let's start with the first issue. Now to fix that, we want to change the transform origin to something else. So let's say here, 
transform origin let's make it left and top so what this will do it will move the transform origin from the middle to the top left corner of the element when it's at the middle all the transformation will happen around that point for example it will be pushed from the bottom to the top so it's always going to be around that point when we move that point to the top left corner then all the transformation will happen around it which means we're going to scale it from the bottom of the element let's see if this fixes it let's scroll and that works but now let's limit the range of the animation so if you remember we can modify the range of the animation using animation range and by default the animation timeline starts from the top all the way to the bottom and the animation range starts from the top all the way to the bottom so the animation range start is 0% and animation range end is 100% to change the range we can move the animation range endpoint to somewhere here and for example we can use a 100 pixels value which means the animation will start from the top to somewhere here let's try that so below here we're going to say animation range and it will start from 0% to 100 pixels. Now let's save and try. And it works. So you can see how the animation ended after we scrolled 100 pixels. Now let's get back to the question I asked earlier in this video. Why using a separate element for header background and not using the background color on the element itself? To answer that, let's move the animation code to the header element. So I'm going to cut this. And let's scroll here and use it on the header element like this and let's save now when i scroll see what happens so all the elements squished here and the reason for that is that when you use scale to resize some element all of its children will be affected but when we use a separate element for the background it will not affect anything because it doesn't contain any element so let's move these back to header background now let's add the animation to the picture element we're going to use the same code as these, so let's copy this and let's scroll down to the picture here and let's paste it. And we're gonna rename this animation to shrink picture. Now let's define it below. Keyframes, shrink picture. And we are going to only animate the end state, so let's say two. And we're also going to use transform here. So let's say transform. And we're gonna scale it down using scale. And in this case, I'm using scale, not scale Y, because I'm scaling it along both axes, X and Y. And I'm going to shrink it to 40%. So let's say 0.4. Let's save. So since I'm already scrolled, you can see how the end state will look. But you can see it's not perfectly centered vertically. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to push it a little bit from the top, maybe by 5 pixels. And I can use translate for that. Let's say translate Y, and let's say 5 pixels. So I saved and now it looks perfect and that's it for the picture element now let's animate the name and again i'm going to copy this because we're going to use the same values let's scroll down and let's paste it here this animation will be called shrink name so let's say shrink name and let's define it below and say shrink name and for the end state we're going to also use transform and let's say scale and i'm going to shrink it to 70 percent let's say 0.7 and let's save so after I saved, you can see how it shrinks correctly. But there is a big gap here, and we can fix this by moving the element to the left. And we can use translate for that. Let's say translate x, and let's move it by negative 85 pixels. Let's say negative 85 pixels. So I got this value by experimenting a little bit, and I found that this is the perfect value. And to mention this again, always make sure you are using transform origin top left, so it's always shrinking in the correct way. Now, last but not least, let's handle the title. And again, let's copy these and use them in the title. Let's scroll and paste it here. And let's rename the animation to fade title. And let's define it below. Fade title. And let's define the end state. Now, to hide the element, we want to set the opacity to zero. So let's say opacity zero. Now, let's save and see. So let's scroll. So you can see how it's fading correctly, but it actually doesn't seem quite right to me. For this animation specifically, I want the animation to run faster than the others. So for example, when I scroll somewhere here, I want the element to already be hidden. And we can fix that by manipulating its animation range. And again, this is the animation timeline. 
and the animation range start is here for all of them and the animation range end is 100 pixels somewhere here for this animation specifically i want the animation to end sooner for example instead of setting the end to 100 pixels let's set it to 20 pixels somewhere here which means the animation for the title would end after i scroll 20 pixels from the top so we can update that simply by changing the animation range from 100 pixels to 20 pixels now let's try that so you can see how it works and to improve it more we can move it to the left while it's hiding and we can use translate for that so let's say transform translate x and let's move it by 18 pixels so negative 18 pixels and let's save and let's try again that looks better to me and that's it for this example